Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very interesting guest joining us anonymously from Oregon. And I, I don't want to screw this up. So I'm just going to let you please, sir, introduce yourself, how you like to be recognized as well as your topic today. Sweet. Hi, Adam. Long time no see, my friend. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I, uh, I don't mind, actually, if you, if you broadcast my image on video. Mainly, um, I just wanted to avoid any kind of searchable text. So, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you know, just because I have some uh, business dealings and I'm not really, uh, not, not that what I'm about to say is really even that controversial or off-putting, um, but, you know, I've just been asked to keep it kind of calm on social media is all. So I just want to respect that, but I don't mind showing my face. So if you guys want to turn that on. Okay. All right. And, and you want to be known as Michael Liberty from Oregon. Word. And, and we're, we're talking about the mask racket, right? I mean, this is like, I understand why, you know, I, it, it's like I've been saying, just because people are afraid and they shouldn't be, doesn't mean we shouldn't recognize that they're afraid. And so I really do respect even challenging something as seemingly benign as this, that if you come out publicly, if you have a business interest, and you say, well, hey, I'm not as afraid of the virus as everybody else is. I'm not going to be wearing a mask at my shop. Well, they're that, that you're going to lose some of your customers, you know, and it's really, really dumb that that in when people are scared, you have to have this sensitivity. So Michael Liberty from Oregon, I, I definitely respect that. So what what is it that, that that's the, the heart of what you need to challenge right now about the mainstream narrative? <laughs> Well, what we really need to challenge in Oregon is Governor Kate Brown um, politically. Um, and not just in Oregon either, where you uh, have spent lots of time in the great state of Texas. There's Greg Abbott. Uh, mm -hmm. There is um, uh, Governor Kelly in Idaho, uh, both of whom, by the way, are, 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 are alleged to be conservative Republicans. Well, hold on. That, 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 that just means they're part of the conservative Republican wing of the American Socialist Party as opposed to the liberal Democratic wing of the American Socialist Party. I mean, we all know better. Sure. Well, and and obviously it's not the people, the, it's not the libertarian center where we all really exist who are calling the shots there. It's the health departments. It's the, um, and that comes from the top down. That's That I lay on the doorstep of President Donald, da Donald J. Trump. Um, and so I, I want to be, I want to be, ma make sure that I am perceived here as an across the board accuser of, <laughs> gov of government political hacks. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm certainly no Kool-Aid drinker. I, I see things more objectively, I think, and that's because I'm a libertarian. Um, it's because I let go. No, 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 Michael, Michael, I, I have to correct you there. Excuse me. You're a libertarian because you see things objectively, not the other way around. If you're subjective, if you're emotionally driven, if you're delusional, if you reject the scientific method, yeah, embrace <laughs> government, embrace the state and all of its lies and falsehoods. If you're an objectivist and you believe in looking at reality rationally and with observation and scientific analysis and methodology, well, inevitably, eventually you'll be a libertarian because you'll realize that the violence of the state is never good for humanity, right? Well, democide is the number, is the leading cause of uh, premature death among humans. So, but, and I, and by the way, Adam, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did liberty <laughs> come before thought or did thought become, be, come before liberty? Or well, do the, the egg or came or do first intentionally? You had dinosaurs laying eggs and there was an almost chicken evolved the dinosaur that laid an egg that hatched into the first chicken. So no, we can do this. We can do this. Uh, but no, your point is well taken. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, the reason that I contacted you, your show, you and, and uh, initially was because I stopped by uh, a, a local, there was a parking lot at a bar uh, in a small town near where I live. And they were promoting a sign that said, sign the petition, recall Governor Brown. And I, and I thought, well, there's plenty of good reasons to do that. So I stopped by and saw and, and found out that what they were doing is that they are, they are sick of the usurpation 
uh, that she is demonstrating the usurpation of the, the will of the people in Oregon. Uh, and by this, I mean that she has uh, extended a, a state of emergency, which is a, a big old load of horse shit. Just the words state of emergency by themselves. And for many people on this on this stream, I'm sure you know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, it's it's absurd that we give and somebody that, like Kate Brown right. or or Abbott or anybody like that dictatorial powers uh, because and, of and as, you, as you pointed out, laying the blame with the president. It was the national state of emergency that made all the state states of emergency possible. And as you point out, out can't underline this enough. A state of emergency, a, a government declared state of emergency is just them saying, hey, you know all those things you use to limit our power? We're not recognizing them anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, by the way, the Bill of Rights that you guys cling to, yeah, th those things that are inherent to individual human beings. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, what was that again? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. You guys don't need that. You're too stupid. You're too, you're too stupid to wield that kind of power, general public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I stopped by Adam and I and I signed the petition because ultimately what it what it would do is it would it's kind of like political grandstanding in a way because honestly, by the time you know a petition like this gets through the process, um, or even some of the federal lawsuits which have been filed against Governor Brown here um, by people wanting to return to the, kind of having a normal life as opposed to, you know, being forced to wear a mask and being forced, you know, to, to, to quote unquote, socially distance and all this nonsense that, that really is all illegal in the first place. They can't, they can't require any of that by law. There is no law. All there is, is an executive order. And the executive order expired back in April and she extended it. This is the reason that people are so pissed. Okay. So from an abundance of caution, we did, this. we did this initially, right? And, and I get that. I'm a heartfelt guy. I get people wanting to be safe. I'm, I was the same way. And, and quite frankly, and I'll get to this, I wore a mask for the first three weeks of this whole thing. Okay? Mm. <laughs> I, so you failed the big public IQ test. <laughs> I, I speak from experience. And when I see the, 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 the general public being ignorant about this new coronavirus that came out, I immediately started to educate myself, but that's a whole nother storyline. Uh, let me get back to the governor. So I found out also because I like to put my money where my mouth is. Um, I, <clears throat> I found out who was promoting this petition to recall the governor. And, um, and I found out that it was the, the, the Oregon GOP. And of course that immediately created a conflict in my mind <laughs> because I want to support them and it, you know, that's when I contacted you. Uh, was right after I hit the, the send button on my payment uh, to the state GOP to help them fight and help them get Governor Brown recalled in a legal well, way. You, wait, 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 wait! You trust the Republican Party to use your money for what they say they're going to? Well, Adam, at this point in time, there's nobody else really doing this, and so from from my from my. Uh, my cautiously optimistic, um, you know, sometimes um, sometimes optimistic to a fault. <laughs> I gave money to the GOP and it made me chuckle out loud and I immediately saw your face in my mind. <laughs> and and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna let Adam know that I did this because <laughs> to, me, to me, this is the ultimate libertarian move. It's me using my mind and my talents and my resources to promote a cause that I believe in with all of my heart. And whether they use it for that or not, that was the giving nature of my uh, of my contribution. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I can understand yeah. the specific strategy. There. Let me challenge you with a bigger question, though. Sure. I mean, who's going to replace the governor? What What's the actual effect of this? And then is it more effective to fight for a different governor who's still going to be a part of this corrupt system, who's going to be pulled from the you know existing talent pool of the old parties? Or would it be better to invest your energy in, you know, coming on a show and talking about this and getting out and spreading the message of libertarianism and waking people up so that instead of uh, putting a Band-Aid on this wound now, we can do some more long-term healing? No, I, I totally respect that. And and quite frankly, I knew you would challenge me because I, I've been following you and, and know you for a while now. <laughs> 
and uh, and that's okay. I don't mind being challenged by my by my fellow thinkers, my fellow thought leaders, if you will, and people who have gone out of their way to. Um, let me just put it this way, Adam. There's very few people that I would allow to challenge me as much as you have, actually. So it's uh, it, much respect, my friend, and I appreciate that. So the the bottom line is, you're you're right. Yeah, I want to. I didn't give them my entire fortune, by the way. <laughs> I I gave them something as a as a uh, as a uh, kind of like an offering to say thank you for starting the, this petition and keep it up. I mean, it's kind of like a vote of confidence. It's kind of like buying a product. To me, it's kind of like a product. Right. Well, and, and I I get the argument or the the, the value in can we, can we make the politicians fight amongst themselves so they have less energy to fight us, right? That's exactly right. So promoting the idea of a recall, because how often does that actually happen? How often does an executive in office ever actually have to face the music, really, in a significant way? Even even Richard Nixon, as everybody likes to refer to oh well this makes Watergate look like you know sweet potatoes or whatever you know <laughs> so like so let's just use Richard Nixon as an example because besides getting executed or or, or taken out by the deep state if you will um, he was the only one that has actually stepped down or would have he was impeached and then he's like okay well I guess I'm screwed you know um, even with that he was he, he, he was given executive privilege. Gerald Ford just said, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Never mind what you did. Never mind that it was a that it was a federal law that you broke and it, it has everything to, to do with election meddling and you know, blah, blah, blah. Eh, forget about it. That's basically how the precedent was set. And since that time, even though we may have like substantial evidence against all of these executives at various levels of government, nothing ever seems to happen to them. Or if it does, it's very insignificant or kind of like a slap on the wrist. Right. It's never the kind of thing where the people actually are able to step up and say, yo, this is horseshit. We've got to throw, we've got to throw the key, the, the book at this person. <laughs> Freedom would be a great book to start with. Although, <laughs> although it's kind of light and it wouldn't hurt that bad, but it's a great read. <laughs> I, I, hey, I know 11 different ways how to kill somebody with this object. Just say no. <laughs> That's good. I That's something on my head. I'll just write out 11. Our, our, our government taught you well. Oh, yeah. So, but anyways, that speaks to the larger issue. Why do I why do I care so much about getting rid of Governor Brown? And that's kind of goes back to how you started the conversation um, where, you know, the, 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 the just generally speaking, the idea of shackles of any kind is repugnant to me. And I and it, it really causes me to to have a visceral reaction i've actually literally been in shackles too from not nearly as many times or as kind of dramatic uh -huh. of ways as you but I have, been, I have been there in the back of that squad car my friend in handcuffs and i get it and it and so but that's nothing compared to what um we're about to see if we allow this this uh this authoritarian uh kind of gulag style uh thought process to continue if the yep. further away from liberty that we get, the, the closer to utter bondage we become. And that is the part that, that gets me out of my comfort zone. Well, it's not really out of my comfort zone, but it's the part that gets me off the dime, man. It's the part that gets me out. It gets me passionate and gets me fired up. And so while I'm a human being and I'm flawed and all that general nonsense too, I have a voice. And, and while I can use it, I'm going to use it as often as possible. So I appreciate you having me on the show. So what's your take on the masks? How does that relate to this? <clears throat> uh, well, um, the masks, I, I think, are really more symbolic than useful. Actually, the science backs me up on that. Right. Um, ad nauseum, actually. I could go on and on and on and on about the science. And, and frankly, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. What I would like to do instead is just tell anybody who's hearing my voice right now, go look for yourself. Go read the actual studies at PubMed, NIH.gov, from which Fauci sits on his pedestal. Mm -hmm. Go look at the science that he actually referred to on March 8th in a 60 Minutes conversation, 60 Minutes interview, where he said, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Masks don't do any good anyways. Well, now he's, they've reiterated. Now, now they, they've, they've made it almost impossible to find that video on YouTube, for example. And so now you have to find it on you know, obscure 
alternative uh, platforms uh, to find out what he actually said. Um, what he actually said was actually right. And it follows the science and masks are horse shit. They're bad for you to wear for long periods of time. And, and I, I don't have a job right now, Adam, because my employer's in lockstep with this nonsense. And the nonsense is coming from an executive order that was signed by Governor Brown and um, is continuing on. And now, the, and now the health authorities are saying, oh, we need to make everyone wear a mask in public now. And, and my county commissioners are sitting now deliberating this as, as if it's even legal, as if it's even some sort of thing they can deliberate on. Fuck them, frankly, fuck them. They can all fuck themselves. I'm not Dude. doing it. I ain't, there's no compliance here. Anyways, I got a little off track there with my energy, but that, that's how I feel about it. That's where it comes in. I'm not in lockstep. I'm not going to give in to these fucking brown shirts who are going around, you know, uh, implementing this, whatever you want to call it, New World Order, Event 201, whatever you want to call it, Bill Gates, wet dream. I don't know. What, what do you want to call it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all of the above, and I'm not down with it. So what do you think is going to happen in Oregon with the recall? I don't know. Oregon, Oregon has a very, uh, has a very Democrat bent because all the Democrats live in the basically two or three big cities in Oregon that control the entire process. Right. And, and frankly, yeah. and frankly, we kind of, you know, one of the things that's been proposed here is like a, an electoral college for the, for the, uh, uh, you know, state representatives and governor too. Um, but you know, Short of a short of an entire you know chain makeover in, in the legislature, it's it's just it's just more shit, different day. <laughs> so, do, you think, do you think the recall will be successful? Like, how far will it actually get? That's a I I I would love to know that. I've been trying to gather information on it so for the in preparation for the show, <clears throat> but right now it's preliminary. They're still gathering signatures. It hasn't even gone to the Secretary of State's office. So I have I really don't know how much momentum there is, but. I do know that these uh, petitions have circulated across the state, and you know if if we're talking about an electoral uh, uh, map, which I know we as libertarians kind of hate because it doesn't include our color, which is more of a purple color or something, yellow. Like, or whatever, yellow or something. I don't know what the fuck you, whatever. It's some other color. <laughs> Gold runs. Um, it's uh, you know it's hard to uh, <clears throat> it's hard to know because it's like. 90% of the state geographically is red. So that means it's Republican or more, more conservative because it's, it's agricultural, it's country. It's people right. who like to live on their own. Oh, here we go. Cool. Thanks for finding that. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, Michael Liberty from Oregon, thank you so much for bringing this to attend to our attention and, and to let in our audience know for anybody who's in Oregon or can help out to, uh, to at least sign this petition uh maybe you want to join michael in in more actively supporting the republican party efforts there but this is one of those big things that if, if it did go through it would slow down government significantly I, I wouldn't say that it's it's ever not worthwhile to get politicians fighting amongst each other so michael uh any ways you want people to be able to connect with you or or any last thoughts yeah, I would. I would also like to encourage people um, to to really dive into the mask issues, to really dive into the uh, the contact tracing issue. There's a uh, congressional bill right now in the House of Representatives, the the, the U.S. House, and it's HR six 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 six. Just let that number sink in for a moment. Yeah, right. Anybody who's familiar with the Bible, right? Um, and all and and it's a hundred billion dollar author authorization, a hundred billion dollars and authorization for the CDC to hire contractors to go door to door in America in every state and um, start collecting information and start having a database on everybody, which of course in some ways they already do. But this actually just ratchets up the it's called the Trace Act and it ratchets up everything that's that's draconian about government. It really is Gestapo 2.0. Um, or whatever you, I mean, it's really amazing. So look into that. Contact tracing is a big no-no. Wear a mask if you want to. Here's what I think about that. Liberty should rule. Choice is mm -hmm. the matter of the day. I don't yep. care if you wear a mask. I'm not offended by that. Some people might think that they need to. That's good by me. It helps their mentality, whatever. Just don't make me do it. 
because yep. I take vitamin D, I take zinc, I eat well. I intentionally invest in my uh, <laughs> my well-being, and I hope that everybody can do that. I hope that everybody does that and stop relying on the government to tell you whether or not you should be wearing a stupid mask. It, it creates hypoxia. It creates uh, uh, it's like a it's like a breeding ground for more viruses and, and bacteria to 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 you know go to church in your mouth. <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. it, it's to me it's a horrible idea, but some people want to do it, and fine with me. Just don't make me do it okay yeah th th those that's my closing that's kind of my closing spiel <laughs> so all right well thank you so much for joining us today brother peace and love to you and i uh, hope you keep us posted on those efforts in oregon